So we are here with uh, Professor Adrian Rain, uh, an author of The Anatomy of Violence. Thank you for joining us. Uh, the first question that I had is the title of your book, Anatomy of Violence. Can you kind of explain what's behind the title? It's, I'm really looking at the body of knowledge, the growing body of knowledge that is increasingly documenting a biological basis to crime. So, you know, for the past 100 years, we've put the finger on poverty, bad neighborhoods. Of course, that's important. But in addition, there's a biological side of the equation. It's a bit like a coin. It's got two sides. We've been looking at the social side all the time. We now need to turn the coin around and look at the biological causes of crime and violence. Because unless we do that, we'll never stop the rot. We'll never stop violence and crime in society. So what are the biological components? Is there such a thing as a killer gene? There's not exactly a killer gene, but there are genes which predispose or raise the odds that someone will become a violent criminal offender. We've been doing twin studies documenting that 50% of the variance, 50% of the cause of crime antisocial behavior can be chalked up to genes. Now, that means the environment is still very, very important. But again, there are biological factors. And they range from a low resting heart rate to health factors like the mother taking alcohol and smoking during pregnancy, which damages the early fetal brain, going up to things like high testosterone levels, the male uh, aggression hormone. Um, and then going into brain imaging, we've been looking at the prefrontal cortex, the very frontal part of the brain that's involved in regulating, controlling behavior, you know, um, holding back on our impulsive behavior. And that's damage or functioning more poorly in murderers. A bit like the brakes are broken on a car. When that happens, you know, the car gets out of control. So, so can people too, if this frontal part of the brain is just not working too well. Do you notice a difference between the violent tendencies of men versus women? Certainly, we know that, you know, 90% of all homicides are committed by men. Now, why is that? There's a couple of interesting reasons. First of all, men have lower resting heart rates relative to women. That's one of the risk factors for crime and violence. Secondly, of course, men have higher testosterone levels, that hormone. And we also know from many studies that testosterone is partly related to aggressive behavior. Thirdly, the very orbital frontal cortex, the part sitting above your eyes, lying behind your forehead, we find that to be reduced in men in general compared to women. This is the part of the brain that's involved in emotion regulation, involved in checking on our impulses. And we know that people with a reduction in the volume physically in that part of the brain are more likely to be psychopathic criminal violent offenders, whether you're a man or a woman. So a woman with a reduction in that part of the brain is more likely to be criminal. That's true in men, but men in general are lower than women. And if you take that into account, that can explain 50% of the reason for why men are more violent and criminal. So, you know, one of the messages in Anatomy of Violence is that, of course, socialization factors can in part determine the gender difference in crime. You know, we give little girls dolls and we give little boys toy guns. Well, I'm not saying that that's wrong, but what I am saying is that in addition to that, there are these other biological factors that can explain the gender difference in crime and violence.